Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Praise God. We thank God for another opportunity the Lord has given me to, praise God, come and share with you the precious word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Friday. Praise God. July the 22nd, I believe it is. Praise God. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here. Praise God. Here in Birmingham, Alabama, declaring once again that Christ is the answer to all of our problems. Praise God, it doesn't really matter how large, how small, how difficult, how they have been deemed by many to be impossible to solve. Praise God, our God can do abundantly above all that we ever could conceive in our hearts and minds. We will just put our trust in Him. Praise God, that's simply all we have to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. But now I do have a word. Praise God, I have a word for you today. Praise God on this, uh, praise God on this Friday. Praise God, kind of cloudy outside, but the sun, praise God, the S-O-N, is shining within our hearts. Every believer, praise God, that love the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, turn with me to the book of Mark. We're going to look at the book of Mark, Mark's gospel, and we're going to look at the second chapter. And I do encourage you once again, look with me. Praise God, don't take my word. Don't take anybody's word for what does said the Lord. That has been our problem for many, many years. We have listened to certain people, and we have believed that they have the uh, full knowledge and understanding of God's Word, and we have taken what they have given us, and we have ran with it, praise God, to our detriment. Don't do it anymore. You look for yourself. Mark 2, write it down. Be a Berean believer. Search the Scriptures daily and determine whether or not these things are in line with the Word of God. If it don't match up with the Word of God, then praise God, we might as well just push it aside. Praise God and trust God and not man. Uh, Mark 2, chapter, we're looking at verse 27. Well, let's start at 24. We'll start at 24. Let's start at 24 there. It said, Then the Pharisees said unto him, That is Christ now, behold, why do they? Your disciples, he mean, on the Sabbath day, do that which is not lawful. And Christ said unto them, Have you never read what David did when he had need and he was hungry? He and they that were with him, how he, David, went into the house of God in the days of Abiah the high priest and did eat the show of bread, which was not lawful, not lawful to eat only for the priest, and he gave also to them that were with him. Now, in verse 27, Christ says, he said, he said unto them, uh, the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for this. Praise God, another opportunity you've given me to come to Praise God to share your word today. Now, Lord, I pray that you use me as an instrument. I couldn't do it by which the Holy Spirit will speak through me to your people by the power of God, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, Father God, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Verse 27 again, key verse there, very key, key to our uh, subject uh, that we're going to use today. Uh, verse 27 Christ said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And we want to speak from these words uh, today, uh, Christ's teachings on the Sabbath. Christ's teachings on the Sabbath, about the Sabbath. Christ's teaching us a very important lesson about the Sabbath here. And uh, this is going to be part one. We'll do part two in this uh, little mini-series here. In other words, uh, we're here today and on tomorrow, praise God, we'll bring you part two, uh, the final part, on Christ's teachings on the Sabbath. Praise God. Now, last week, if you remember, we taught on a series of messages about, praise God, the false teachings that uh, uh, many uh, seem to espouse to that says believers can lose his or her salvation. And of course, we know for a fact that this is not true. Amen. Praise God. We know it's not true. The devil in hell, he knows it's not true. Now, this is just another 
one of the many lies that he uses to, to distract the believers. This is his objective here, distract the believers from their mission. You know, and the devil knows in order to uh, be successful in our mission that Christ has given us, we need to, we need to have assurance. We need to be bold as a lion. So he brings up many subjects to kind of confuse us and to distract us. And that's why it's important that you know the truth about these subjects, because the truth will set you free. Free to do what? Free to do what God has called you to do. Amen. But now he's about distracting uh, the believers in our mission to lift up the name of Jesus, to preach this gospel, and uh, be a witness of the power of God to change lives of people. But now today we're going to we're going to look at, um, at at another doctrine here that he uses to distract us and that is Christians must keep the Sabbath. Christians must keep the Sabbath. That's flowing around here. A number of denominations have uh, uh, held to this type of doctrine, which, like I say, is another distraction. But now there are perhaps millions, probably millions of well-meaning, well-meaning. You can be well-meaning, praise God, well-meaning souls throughout this world. They are convinced of this doctrine here that uh, we as Christians must worship on the Sabbath. Amen. See, men are convinced that all believers should keep the seventh day Sabbath as a day of rest and worship. And some go so far as to say that if, uh, praise God, our salvation actually depends upon our keeping the seventh day Sabbath. Yes, they go that far. Praise God. But now that's why it's good to know that you know what you know, and uh, you know a lie when you hear a, hear a lie. But again, there are Christian groups. Now, again, Christian groups now that say since the resurrection of Christ, the Sabbath day has been changed from the seventh day to the first day of the week, which is Sunday. But now, unfortunately, they both are incorrect. Both of them are incorrect. Hmm? The Bible does not say anywhere that Christians should observe the Old Testament Sabbaths. Hmm? It doesn't say that. Nowhere in the Bible. Praise God. But now, it is true. It is a fact. It is true that the Old Testament Sabbath is the seventh day. It's on the seventh day, which is Saturday. That's true. It is not Sunday. It is not Sunday. Praise God. Let's let's look at uh, Exodus 20. Let's begin there. Exodus 20. And I'm going to get just to a part of that uh, first part of that uh, verse 10. Exodus 20 and uh, first part of verse 10. What are we saying? Hmm? The, the, the Old Testament Sabbath is on the seventh day, which is Saturday, not Sunday. It's not Sunday. Look at verse 10, Exodus 20 and 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Hmm? The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Hmm? See, the Sabbath of rest, the Sabbath day of rest followed the six days of labor and was looked upon as the end of the week, the culmination of the work, the work week. But now again, let me say this loud and clear. I want to be loud and clear. Saturday is the Old Testament Sabbath. No doubt. There's no argument here. None at all. Not at all. Amen. But now, the keeping of the Sabbath is an Old Testament command and not a New Testament command. You ought to need to say that again. Praise God. The keeping of the Sabbath is an Old Testament command and not a New Testament command. Hmm. Oh, boy. So, but, but now the Sabbath is part of the Mosaic law and was only given unto the Jews under the law. There is not a one commandment in the New Testament. No out. Praise God. To the believers, that is, about keeping the Sabbath. Nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. Praise God. But now, the, the other commandments are mentioned over and over again. The moral laws, that is, uh, by the apostles over and over throughout the uh, New Testament. They are mentioned there, but not the Sabbath. See, in the New Testament, many types of sins are mentioned. Many, many sins are mentioned. 
Praise God, in the New Testament. Hmm? But never the sin of breaking the Sabbath. It's not there. It can't be found. Jesus never commanded his disciples to keep the Sabbath. Never. And as a result, the religious Jews, praise God, they wanted to kill Jesus. They wanted to get rid of him. Praise God, he is messing with their Sabbath. Hmm? Well, I'll tell you what, look at John. Let's go to John's gospel. Find John's gospel there. The Jews, now they're upset. Jesus, uh, he's not commanding his disciples to keep the Sabbath. And they are upset. John 5, look at John 5 there. Gospel of John, verse 5. And we're going to look at 18, 5 and 18. Therefore, it says, therefore the Jews sought uh, the more to kill him, to kill Christ. Why do they want to kill Christ? Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. He broke the Sabbath. Hmm? He didn't teach it. He didn't adhere to it. And therefore, they were kind of, he, he didn't push it on the people there. See, the Jews hated Jesus because he did not keep the Sabbath, and they also rebuked Jesus for not teaching his disciples that they also must observe the Sabbath. They were angry with him. Praise God. Look again. If you look at Matthew 12, Matthew 12. Now, we talk about Jesus teaching on, on the Sabbath here, and this part one. Praise God. We're just going to kind of knock the dust off this subject today, but tomorrow we'll dive deep. We'll dive deep in the water tomorrow. But now look at uh, Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Now, Jesus didn't teach him to observe the Sabbath, and therefore he became a target to the religious people during that time. Matthew 12, 1 and 2, it reads, and at that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the cornfield. Christ went through on the Sabbath day through the cornfield. Now, he's supposed to do no work on Sabbath day. And the disciples were the hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw that, the church folks saw that, they said unto him, behold, our disciples do that which is not lawful. What he's got to do on the Sabbath day? What are they doing? They're not supposed to work. They're not supposed to do no labor. You let them do that, Jesus. Oh, remember Jesus said now, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Hmm? Praise God. In other words, the day for our benefits is not the, our benefits for the day. Oh, boy, but they had to turn around, didn't they? Well, but Jesus tried to show them that the Sabbath was part of the ceremonial laws that he gave to Moses in the Old Testament, like the sacrifices, and which were, were fulfilled. All of them fulfilled in himself. When Christ came, he fulfilled those uh, uh, ceremonial laws. And like I say, on tomorrow, we're going to dive deep into a few things here that are going to help you clearly understand this. But now listen as Christ speaks through the prophet Hosea. Well, listen to what he says in Hosea 6. See, can you find Hosea 6 in your Bible? Hosea 6, if not, jot it down, go back later on, and then look at this in depth. Look, Get a good, deep look into it. Hosea 6 and 6. Christ says uh, through the prophet Hosea, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice. Hmm? And the knowledge of God is what I desired more than the burnt offerings. So those ceremonial laws, the offerings and sacrifice, was temporary. They were only a temporary tool until Christ came and fulfilled them. Hmm? See, Jesus did not teach his disciples to keep the law, and nor did the apostles. None of them, none of the apostles, especially Paul. Paul, he, he went into the details why you shouldn't do it. Praise God. Paul, and then remember now, Paul wrote over half the, praise God, the New Testament. Praise God. See, the Sabbath is an Old Testament doctrine. That's what we're saying. Not New Testament. It's not. It has no place in the New Testament at all. Praise God. Now, there was once, once they had a meeting because there was so much confusion about the new converts not keeping the Sabbath. They had a big meeting there in Jerusalem. The brothers got together and held, held a meeting and uh, uh, concerning uh, the ceremonial laws and, and whether the Gentile converts, these new converts, should be a part of this, involved in this here. And then, the, praise God, they, 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 they drafted a letter. And they sent that letter to them and uh, explaining what they were to observe. Hmm? But now, no mention of the Sabbath was included. Zero. Hmm? You want to see it? Go to Acts 15. Let's look at the letter. They sent a letter to the new converts telling them what they should adhere to. Acts 15. 
Praise God. Acts 15. Jot it down. Uh, or, or if you can't find it quickly, Acts 15. Look at 19 there. Acts 15 and 19. A letter was drafted from the leaders of the uh, the new church, the new believers there, uh, uh, telling the Gentile believers exactly what they were to adhere and believe. Okay, look at uh, 15, Acts 15, 19. Wherefore, my sinners is, huh, that you trouble them not. Don't trouble these new converts. Leave these, leave these young, young people alone, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Leave them alone. But, but, but all we want them to know is that we, we, we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols. Forget these idols now. Get them idols out your house. Fornication, hmm? immorality, Hmm? Sexual immorality. Get rid of that stuff there now. And things that are strangled and from that drinking that blood and all those rituals that uh, you had in the dark world. Now get rid of all of that stuff. That's all they said. But again, I repeat, the, the keeping of the Sabbath is not mentioned. It's not mentioned. The keeping of the Sabbath was a law between Israel and God only, 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 only. Praise God. Look at Exodus. Go back to Exodus. Praise God. It was something between God and Israel only. And it was not to go out of the gate. It was not for the generation that believed on Christ Jesus, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Look at Exodus 31. I think we can see that pretty clearly. Uh, Exodus 31 Let's look at 16. We'll start at 16 there. Uh, 16. He said, Wherefore the children of the Israel shall keep the Sabbath. That's what God says uh, to, through Moses. To observe the Sabbath throughout their generation for a perpetual covenant. Look at 17. It is a sign between me. Me? Talk about the Lord. He's talking about him, myself. And the children of Israel forever. Forever. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. Hmm? Go to Ezekiel. I'll show you another one. What are we saying? The, 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 the keeping of the Sabbath was, was a law given by God. It was for Israel and between Israel and God only. Amen. Ezekiel. Well, let's look at that then. Ezekiel. We're looking at 20. 20, 20, 20, and 10 there. 20 and 10. 20 and 10. Uh, listen to the Lord again. Uh, he says, uh, through the prophet Ezekiel, wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt, some of these people, and brought them into the wilderness. Verse 11. And I gave them my statutes. I showed them my judgments, which if a man do, if a man do, if a man do, if a man do, he shall even live in them. Look at verse 12. He says, moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. See, now God makes it plain here. God makes it plain that the Sabbath keeping was between himself and Israel. Listen now, between himself and Israel. Adam knew nothing about a Sabbath. Enoch knew nothing about a Sabbath. Noah knew nothing about a Sabbath. Abraham knew nothing about a Sabbath. Hmm? Nothing about Sabbath keeping. Before Mount Sinai, there is a total absence of the mention of a Sabbath. Before Mount Sinai. When God, first, when God finished his creation, what did he do? He rested. He rested. God rested on the seventh day. And he blessed it. The seventh day now, not the seventh. He blessed that seventh day and he, what? He sanctified it. Hmm? But God gave no command to keep the Sabbath during that creation there. Nothing is there. Go to Genesis 2 then. Huh? Let's look at Genesis 2 now. Like I say, copy them down. If you have problems finding scripture, uh, go to Genesis 2. Praise God. And one, Christ teaching on the Sabbath. Now, we, we want to get a good understanding. we got to get beyond uh, these days and uh, and beyond uh, uh, eating this and eating that. And uh, we got to get beyond losing your salvation. we got to get beyond that so we can do God's work. Okay, look over your fence and look over your back at these things. Genesis 2, 1. Uh, it says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the Sabbath day, God ended his work, which he had made. He rested. On the seventh day from all of his works, 
which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and God sanctified it because in it he had rested from all of his works, which God created and made. Praise God. That's what the scripture says. See, in the New Testament, the believer is, it, it, he's really discouraged, greatly discouraged. Paul greatly discouraged the New Testament believer from attempting to keep the Sabbath. He discouraged him from that. Look at Colossians 2. Praise God. Look at Colossians 2 and uh, go to 14 there. 2 and 14. We'll start at 14. 2 and 14. Paul discouraged the new believers from getting caught up in Sabbath worship. Hmm? Let's listen at it. Hmm? Colossians 2, 14. Blotting out the handwritings, he says, of ordinances, blotting them out, that was against us, and took it out of the way. What did he do? Talking about Christ, he nailed it to his cross. Oh, what he said, he the blood, the hand, the ordinances. Hmm? Look at verse sixteen. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink, what you eat, what you drink, or in respect of any kind of holy day, any designated holy day, or the new moon, or of the Sabbath days. Listen now, which what verse seventeen? You say all these things were just shadows. Why you worship a shadow when you have the real thing right here? Hmm? He said, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Paul says that, he says here that Christ has blotted out all those Old Testament ordinances, hmm? including the Sabbath, no ceremonial days, they blotted out. But now, excluding those, the moral laws, the moral laws are still in effect. We, we couldn't have a good, we, we couldn't have the halfway civil society we have today if it wasn't for the moral laws. So they in effect, thou shalt not kill, steal, and treat your brother right. Oh, that's in effect today. Praise God. Right now, until the end. Will be until the end of time. Praise God. But now, Christ also tells us not to be, uh, uh, Paul, and Paul that is, not to be distracted here by those who will approach us saying, you must worship on the Sabbath day or you're not going to be saved. He said, don't pay them no attention. Or they might say, well, you got to stop eating that hog and meat, that pig stuff, and you can't eat, you leave that catfish alone. You got to stop that. Praise God. If you want to be saved, you got to leave that stuff alone. Praise God. Paul called these things shatters, all shatters, only to be observed until the body, the body come. That is Christ in a body. A body that has not made me. Oh, God, I come to do thy will, oh, God, is what Jesus says. See, therefore, now, we, we can spiritually tell the, praise God, seven dead men and all the rest of these seven worshiping people. We can tell them, any any of them, praise God, the Bible says, uh, you, you can't judge me in this situation, brother. No, you can't, because Christ has nailed these ordinances to his cross. They were nailed to the cross with Christ. They are zipped. They are gone. We can tell them. Uh, without any shadow of doubt. Amen. But again, now listen to how Paul described these outdated rituals again. I'm, I'm a, he, he, he's hard on them. Go to Galatians 4. Paul again described these outdated rituals that people insist on the observing today, days and food and uh, tidings, and you're obligated to give this and that and all, all kind of things. Look what Paul says in Galatians 4, Galatians 4 and 8. Paul says, how be it then, when ye knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods, when you didn't know God. But now, verse 9, but now after that you know God, well, it'll be a change, huh? How, turn, how is that you turn again to these weak and beggarly elements? Then he, then he named them. Look at verse 10. You observe days, y'all special days, y'all got special months huh? and times and years. Then verse seven, Paul said, I'm afraid of you, brothers. I'm afraid of y'all. Huh? Lest I'll be stored upon you labor in vain. Have I been teaching you all this time and you hadn't learned yet hmm? that we are under grace, we're not under the law? Have you not learned that yet? Praise God. Some of us slow learners, though. That's all there is to it. But now some of us not in position to learn because if you're not saved, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if he hadn't opened your understanding, he hadn't given you ears to hear and eyes to see, then quite naturally you're going to be blind to these things. Hmm? See, the only days that uh, should be celebrated in the church today is the Lord's Supper and baptism. Nothing else. Zip. Hmm? All others against the word of God. 
They're man, man-made traditions. All of them. No exception, brother. No exception. Paul also says that the believers have liberty. We have liberty. Praise God. Liberty. In other words, we have been liberated from the Old Testament ceremonial laws. We've been liberated, except for the moral laws now, and are only obligated to obey the moral law. That's all. That's all. That's all. And this knowledge, praise God, we have this knowledge. I thank God. The true believers, we understand this. And we have this knowledge. We have this knowledge deep down inside. And I know it offends many of you. Many people are offended, praise God, when they when we tell them that I'm not obligated to worship God on a particular day. Huh? When I tell them that I'm not obligated to tithe. Praise God. Uh, just a 10%. I, everything I have, I owe to the Lord. Praise God. Yes. And I'm going to give as God has blessed me. Oh, they don't understand that. Catfish, I'll eat it. I'll eat it to the bone. They don't. Oh, you ain't supposed That's nasty. That's a nasty fish. What God has cleansed, called not thou unclean. Oh, they don't understand that the liberty, because they're still somewhat in blindness. They don't understand the liberty which God has given. We've been liberated from the ceremonial laws. All of them. And we're only obligated to obey the moral laws today. I can't say that too much. Amen. And this knowledge we have, praise God, and it offends many. Many are offended. Paul said it would be offended. I look at it, 1 Corinthians. Paul said people are going to be offended because you brothers are heavy. Y'all got this knowledge that God has given you. And praise God, we're trying to follow what man has told us to do. Look at 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10, praise God. And look at 29 there, 10 and 29. Paul says here, conscious, I say, not thine own, but of others. For why is my liberty that God has given us? Why is my liberty, Paul said, judge of another man's conscience? Why is you talking about, do you, you, you just don't feel that I should eat this catfish or, or I should uh, 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 drink this or drink that or, or, or I shouldn't, uh, I should worship on the Sabbath day, on Saturday? What? Paul, Paul said, why, why is it that you probably, y'all are offended because I, I've been set free. I'm a free man. And y'all don't mind. Like, y'all don't like that, do you? Hmm? Look at verse 30. He said, but if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that, that for which I give thanks? Thank you, Lord, for this catfish. Hmm? I thank you, Lord, that I can worship. Praise God. I can worship on the uh, on, on Sunday. I can worship on Saturday. I can worship on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which we do. Praise God. We began worship every day. Amen. We began our day with worship to the Lord. But he don't understand that. Look at the uh, third verse that again. He said, but if I by grace be a partaker, why am I evil? Spoken of for that. Hmm? For which I give thanks. Whether therefore you eat or drink, hmm? or whatever day you worship God, whatever you do, you just need to do it to the glory of God. Hmm. I'm free. Liberty, he's talking about here. It gives no offense, neither to the Jew, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. No, we ain't intentionally trying to make them offended. When we tell them that we'll eat the hog, hmm? we know how much of it to eat. We'll eat the catfish. Praise God, we'll do that. Praise God. But look at 33. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but for the profit of many, that they may be saved. Paul said, now I want them to be saved. Praise God. But now I have been set free. And I'm sorry that it offend them. Praise God, because I'm called to bring men to the Lord. Praise God. And I try to please men in all things. Huh? Not for my own aggrandizement, but in order that they might be saved. But I got to tell them the truth. I got to tell them the truth. Praise God. The fact that we, uh, the true believers, we, we don't do special days. We don't eat, uh, don't eat. Uh, there are not certain foods we don't eat. Huh? And we don't uh, hold to the tithing on 10% because everything I got belongs to the Lord. Praise God. We have no particular day to worship on. Praise God. We don't have days. They got to be on a Sabbath day. They really don't have to be on a Sunday. Oh, boy, because we have no command. That's no command to worship on a Sunday. Hmm? But it's offensive to many, just as it was in Paul's days. And that we say, praise God. To that we say, God, help them. Help them, Lord, open the eyes of the blind people. So many millions of people, their minds are blinded because they lack the Holy Spirit, the light on the inside, which enlightens them to the knowledge of Christ. Now, I'm going to stop here for the day. I'm going to stop here for the day. But tomorrow, we're diving deep tomorrow. Hmm? Uh, I, 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 I want you to get it. hope you get adjusted today to this part one because we're diving deep tomorrow. 
And you're going to need to, praise God, kind of fasten your seatbelt a little bit. Amen? Praise God. We're going to stop here on the bar. We go further for part two. Praise God. But before I close up, praise God, that'd be, it would be awful if I closed up without asking you this question. Are you saved today? Are you saved today? Have you repented of your sin? Has God opened your understanding? Hmm? Have you welcomed him? Into your heart, you know, the Bible revelation says he's standing at the door and knock. He's knocking. He has a place in you that belongs to him. He wants to come in there. He wants to live in there. He wants to direct you there. He wants to be your light in this dark world. But you must repent of your sins and ask Christ to forgive you and come into your heart. Will you do it today? Tomorrow is not promised. It is not promised to any one of us. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, I bless you today. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for his death on the cross, his burial, his resurrection. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit dispatched here in the earth to the believers that accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank you for this great blessing, this joy, this peace that the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. And now, Lord, I pray that you touch the hearts of those whom you have brought to this broadcast. Help them to realize, Lord, that darkness is in many of our hearts and lives, but you come to expel the darkness and to bring forth light. Lord, touch him right now. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you like this video, go hit that like button. Then you can subscribe. And when I, when I come again, and praise God, if God's will, I, 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 God gave me part two in this message. And we're going to dive deep, but you'll be notified if you hit that bell over there when we come on tomorrow. And remember now, we're on Sermon Audio. You can catch us on Sermon Audio. We got all 400 to 500 podcasts on Sermon Audio, James Dansby. And then we own YouTube. Oh, a couple hundred on YouTube podcasts that you can find us. Great Commission and Under Jesus is the Answer, James Dansby. And there's a few even on Facebook. So we're there. We're there with the Word of God. Uncut raw. It's raw, the word of God. But until that time, may God bless you. May God keep you is our prayer. Amen.